So welcome to Open Gov TV. I have a fascinating set of panelists today, and we're going to cover an incredible topic. As you may know, everybody has had to jump on cloud. Cloud architecture has become the forefront of all conversations today, and COVID-19 has become the chief transformation officer in every organization, government or private. So what do we have? Okay, I have a, my panelists. Let me just introduce, please, first. Okay, I got Dr. Dr. Suhazima Benti Dazali, who is the Deputy Director of General Information and Communication Technology and the Government Chief Information Officer from Mampu. I've got Dr. Ang Wan Peng, who is the Chief Operating Officer for MDEC. I've got uh, Dr. Fazila Alodi, who is a Senior Dir Deputy Director, Planning Division, Ministry of Health for Malaysia. And last but not least, I have Yeo Siang Tiong, who is a General Manager, Southeast Asia for Kaspersky. Yes, we will talk about cloud. We will talk about the usage of cloud, the architecture of cloud, and the security of cloud, which is a very, very important topic. Okay, in no particular order, Dr. Su, but may I start with you, ma'am? Just from yes. a government perspective, in the pre-COVID era, if I may mm -hmm. ask, where do you think the organizations or government agencies were on the journey towards the towards cloud-based? As far as the uh, Malaysian public sector, we have been gearing towards uh, what we call a shared services uh, way back since 2010. Uh, but at the time, uh, the strategy was to establish uh, shared services for data center and disaster recovery center. That actually has prepared us uh, to uh, elevate ourselves towards establishing uh, government private cloud. And in the last five years, uh, basically since 2016, uh, we have actually upgrading our data centers uh, to, to be a cloud-based environment. And I would say uh, pre-COVID era, we have been providing infrastructure as a service, um, platform as a service, and to a certain extent, certain software as a service. Um, but there's much more to be done uh, as far as uh, uh, having a real good uh, cloud, private cloud uh, uh, environment. So there's not much different between pre and post, uh, but we see that uh, the post-COVID era has uh, basically heightened the awareness about having uh, infrastructure uh, available to them. We see during the MCO, the Malaysian, uh, uh, Malaysian MCO is what? MCO. MCO. Movement Control Order. Yeah, yes, the Movement Control Order. I escaped me. But, uh, okay, the, during the, uh, we, we see uh, uh, some agencies reaching out to us and say, we want to cut, we want uh, to, to do things remotely. Hence, they need the cloud. Present uh, cloud services that actually uh, is, is a positive thing as far as the awareness about what cloud can do for our agency. Dr. Ong, if I may ask you from an MDEC perspective, do you think shifting to cloud has made operation and data management more effective? The, absolutely, yes. The answer uh, we have been promoting the cloud first policy for a long time. For the business side, obviously, uh, government side will refer to Dr. Su for, for her to pursue that. During the, the, the COVID uh, uh, lockdown, let's say the MCO period, the demand for, for cloud services has increased. It's not like 10%, 20%. It, it goes in multiplier effect, like, like multiple times. And a lot of people suddenly realize that to continue to operate, you really need to depend on digital platform and cloud is the easiest for anybody to adopt, especially coupled with the software as a service and, and obviously before that the platform as a service. People may not notice that we have been using cloud on some of the, uh, the software like uh, Google without knowing it, but now uh, beyond that, people are realizing if I want to do digital uh, marketing, I want to do remote uh, working, cloud is the key enabler. Yes, uh, it also helps because uh, 
from a more digitalization point of view, in order to drive digital transformation, we have to use cloud as a platform for us to store our data. Because it asks about specifically on data. Standardizing data is possible that you have to for your most of your information. Because it's no longer kept in silo in somebody's uh, 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 computer or in some of your uh, remote location. Not everybody access to the same source, everybody upload to the same source uh, and, and viewing the same copy. Definitely, cloud play a very important role in our drive to, to transform the digitally and helping business to be more uh, effective and efficient. Thank you for that. Let me pivot to Dr. Fazila. Okay. How do you think cloud architecture, ma'am, in the healthcare space, okay, in the past few months has evolved? Uh, well, Mohit, uh, I think all over the world, especially during this, uh, since February last few months in the crisis era, uh, we have seen both public sector, private sector in health services, uh, be it in Malaysia or all globally, they have just turned to cloud providers to help scale and also rapidly respond to the crisis. And many of them are also using the commercial cloud uh, providers. And uh, I, I've seen this has accelerated. Uh, in fact, even all the webinars we have heard from other countries, it's the same, same as here. And, and I think with cloud services, it, it allows, a, it's a very practical option to enable a, a quickly, a, for example, virtual meetings, uh, working remotely, and also deploying uh, solutions uh, rapidly. In fact, in one of our quarantine center, the quarantine and low risk center at Maib Serdang, we deployed our, our own uh, hospital information system uh, within days, which is a cloud-based system. Uh, so so that, that was uh, just uh, amazing how it could be done. Yeah. But, uh, but as you know, we have many legacy systems, uh, you know, being uh, in the Ministry of Health. Uh, and so I think uh, moving forward, it, it will be in a hybrid architecture, uh, mm -hmm. both uh, on-premise uh, or hybrid cloud or fully cloud. And, and, and this is the opportunity in, in this uh, post-pandemic era to, to actually leverage on cloud-based uh, digital platforms. And, and this will further accelerate digital transformation, which is what we are hoping in health services. But whatever it is, the architectural design must have the principles of cyber security, uh, patient privacy, data, uh, data integrity, and good governance. So that is our hope in, in moving forward. Perfect. And thank you for that. So then my next question, Sian Tiong, is everybody is seem to be going to the cloud, sir, right? How do we keep it all safe and protected? So um, first of all, when we say cloud, uh, it's very generic, but um, generally, we refer to both private cloud as well as public cloud. And certainly, the cloud technology has come a long way in terms of the technology of the processes, but also the data security. Um, but having said that, cloud is a shared uh, kind of uh, facilities. So the cloud providers do have the flexibility of moving the data around within their various data centers to serve the users better. So that brings to the question how you then secure your data. Um, data encryption is a must. To make sure that your data remains encrypted and even if it should touch or falls into the hands of the wrong person, it stays encrypted. And that is your number one you know, defense against it. But of course, the other good practices uh, is also important. For example, encrypting the channel into the access. Right? VPN is another one. Um, but nothing, uh, nothing beats that security awareness of the end user. The end user, even though they are not uh, uh, experts in cybersecurity, they need to have some basic IT awareness, cybersecurity awareness, so that they know what is the best, what not to do, more than what they need to do, what not to do in cyber hygiene perspective. Uh, and the third and most important pillar, I would say, is having the control and the security in the hands of 
the relevant organization themselves. So uh, the on-prem, off-prem hybrid will be your continuous conversation and it will continue. At the end of the day, you need to have the ability to manage the security. So that means some consistency inside the security policies across. It also means some standard policies like encryption. It also means some standard uh, processes in ensuring that the people still stick to it even though they are working from home and even actually even more so. So that central security management and operation in the form of a SOC, in form of an expert center is critical uh, and even more so in today's world. Mm. No, thank you for that. And you're right. It is, they are pillars and we got to make sure that we are really focusing on all of them. You can just focus on a few and not everything.